This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, today we're going to do a new uh, lighting tutorial in Maya 2017, and we're going to talk about three-point studio light setup. Okay, so here we go. Right guys, well here we go. So we're in uh, Maya 2017, and today we're going to set up a studio lighting for a character. Okay, so we're going to do a three-point light setup for a uh, character illumination. Like I said, my 2017, and it doesn't really matter that much what render you choose. Obviously, you will have to tweak settings depending on what render you choose, but you can use this setup for uh, my hardware, my software, Metal Ray, Arnold, whatever you choose to use. Okay, and you might need to, um, you know, uh, adjust your settings based on the choice that you make. But besides that, same setup. Okay. So I got this model off of uh, renderpeople.com. It's a free model, you can download it. It's fully textured and I'll put a link below. And this guy we are going to use for our scene. Now we're gonna start by creating a, um, a backdrop for, uh, I think his name is Dennis. So we're gonna take a polygon plane here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit Control A first. We're gonna go into the attribute editor and we're gonna set our uh, subdivisions for our polygon uh, plane to one by one. And I'll tell you in a second why, okay? So now that that is selected, we're gonna hit R and we're gonna scale this up a lot because if we need to zoom in or out or change position or whatever, we want all the room necessary to do that, okay? Now, why did I do this um, uh, in one by one subdivision? I'll show you if we right click at the edge, just like that. Hit Control E to extrude and hit W to pull up. Then this will be our backdrop and I'll pull it up a little bit more. And if we select this guy and go to Edit Mesh and Bevel, we can make that a rounded backdrop. Now, if we had more subdivisions in our plane, this would be limited and it would look something like uh, this. But because of the lack of subdivisions, we can do that. Then we can tweak our segments, and by increasing that, we'll get this curved backdrop like you would see in a photo studio, and that way um, the light will have a natural flow, okay? All right, cool. So that's our backdrop. Right-click Object Mode. We're going to right-click and Assign New Material. I'm going to choose a Lambert, and we're going to do White, okay? Just plain white. And Lambert so it's not that reflective, okay? Now, um, maybe our backdrop is a bit large, but we can take Dennis here, hit R to scale him up, and as his pivot point is at his feet, we can just pull him up like so, okay? Let's have a look from various views. Seems to be okay. All right, time to put in our first light. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shut this down. We're gonna go into Create Lights and pick a Spotlight. And again, you can use Arnold specific lighting or RenderMan specific lighting, whatever you want. I'm just gonna use the basic standard Maya lights. So we're gonna hit W to move that up. And we're gonna move this back. And I'm gonna hit R and scale this up quite a bit. Doesn't really have an effect on the light, but it will enable you to see it better, okay? So again, W, pull it back. I'm gonna hit the letter T on my keyboard which will give me a kind of an aim control here. So I can now point that light at Dennis, look for my top view to make sure that I'm aiming correctly, like this, like so. And what you never wanna do is frontal lighting. So our first light needs to be at an angle, so we're gonna go back to our top view, and I'll hit four for wireframe mode so you can see it better. So I basically want this light to be somewhere at an angle, let's say between 45 and maybe, uh, I don't know, 15% or so. I, I usually go with about 45. We don't want it to be too far off, so I'm just gonna bring this in like so. And then you need to adjust the height because we always want this light to be slightly elevated. We don't want this at eye level. We want it slightly higher. So let's go with that. Okay. All right, good, good. So now that we have that, let's uh, turn on our light by hitting seven on our keyboard. And as we do that, you can see that this is what our light is doing right now. 
So we're going to open up the attribute editor, hit control A, and we're going to tweak a couple of things. First of all, if we go in, we can see that the color is white and the intensity is one. Okay. More importantly, we see here that it is set to no decay. Well, decay means that over distance light will become more faint. So uh, a flashlight, you know, that you are using will illuminate an object uh, right in front of you, but at 10 yards away, it would not. Now, normally the decay is turned off. We're going to set this to linear. And as we do that, you will see that the strength of the light will decrease uh, quite a bit, actually. OK, so what we need to do is we need to increase that intensity and uh, quite a lot. So let's go to 40 or so and maybe even more than that. Let's do 60. And I will bring in the light a bit closer. And as I do that, you can see I need to adjust the positioning. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the cone angle. And by doing that, you can see that I can make it bigger or smaller. So let's make sure we cover everything nicely. And then I want to address this harsh shadow line right here. And we're going to do that by adjusting the penumbra angle. Okay. By adjusting that slide, you can see that those edges become much softer, which gives a nicer feel to the whole scene. Okay. Well, that's good. Then we have a drop off value that we can play with when we'll do that slightly as well. I like that effect, but that means I will have to increase the intensity a bit, maybe even more than that. And the reason why I'm doing that is because of, um, the way some renderers respond to the light strength. And I found that typically after setting up my scene, I would have to go back and increase the light strength because it turned out quite dark in my renders. Okay. So I have a slightly elevated position. The angles are nice and soft and the decay rate is set good on light number one. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up a bookmark. Uh, we're going to find an angle where we want to render Dennis and we want Dennis to look impressive. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose a slightly downward angle for our camera. So we're kind of looking up to Dennis a little bit. Now we could go full body on this shot here or almost full body if we wanted to. Yeah, we could. Yeah. So let's do that. We'll select our backdrop. And like I said, that's why we made it so big. We can now hit R and scale that out. And there we go. So I'm happy with this position. So I'm going to go to view bookmark and edit bookmark. And we'll just call this Dennis. Apply and close. So now if we move around, we can just go back to view bookmark and Dennis. And there we go. All right, so let's go to the light number two. And the first one here is my uh, key light. The second one will be my fill light. Okay, so I'm going to use another spotlight for this one. We're going to go to spotlight once again. I'm going to hit W to move it over here. And because I don't want my settings to be impacted by my uh, key light, I'm going to select him. Hit Control H to hide it. Okay. So now I can select uh, my, where is it? Uh, let's see, spotlight number two right there. So I can select that one and I can set that up without worrying about you know the other light. Okay, so again, we're gonna jump to our top view and we're gonna look at the angle. Now we got Dennis standing right here and you can see that our light is at an angle of basically 90 degrees. Now I don't want it to be uh, exactly 90. I want it to be slightly more over here. So I'm going to hit T again on my keyboard for my control. And I'm going to move that towards Dennis like so. And this is at a good angle. So that's good. We're going to look at the height. Height wise, this needs to come down and pointing basically at Dennis's head. And this will go slightly up, not too much. And then we're going to look at what that means for our lighting here. You can see that it's basically missing Dennis completely. So we're going to change that a little bit. We're going to elevate it, but we're also going to deal with the cone angle. Okay. So by increasing that a lot, that works out fine. 
We're going to change the penumbra angle to soften that edge right there. We're going to go and change the drop off like that. And then what's really important here is make sure that your uh, fill light is 55, 60% of the value of your um, key light, okay? So we're gonna go here, we're gonna go to display and show all to turn that back on. Now, I'm just gonna rename this. I'm gonna call this <clears throat> key light. And the second one will be our fill light. So my key light is set at 90. So let's do this at, let's say 50, okay? So we're gonna hit 50, keep in mind that we need to adjust the uh, decay rate. We're gonna go to linear and immediately see a huge change as before. And then this one is kind of um, critical. You kind of need to decide whether you want the other lights to cast shadows or not. Now it's typical for one light in the three light setup to cast shadows. Uh, especially when you're illuminating objects, but in this case, because we've got a character, um, you need to decide whether you want to do that or not, okay? So initially, I'm gonna leave them on, and then we're gonna see if we want to tweak that later on, okay? Let's have a quick look at our uh, bookmark. All right, so that's what we have so far. And then we're gonna go in, let's see. I got my fill light selected. Color, intensity, uh, decay rate. Yeah, that's all good. So now we are gonna look at light number three. Okay, now for that one, one more light. We're gonna do another spotlight and you can use other lights for this as well. But I think personally that spotlights give me the best control. Uh, for example, because a point light will cast light anywhere. So we're just gonna bring that up. I'm gonna move that back. It's way too high, of course. And this is called a, a backlight or sometimes even called a hair light. And I'm just gonna go up here and then we're gonna change the same settings again. So I'm just gonna rename this guy. I'll just call this hair light. And let's see, we're gonna go in. The intensity should be minimal, so let's uh, set the decay rate uh, to linear, and then we'll set the, um, let's turn these guys off, hang on. Okay, back to our hair light. Okay, so decay is uh, set, and uh, let's see, we had 90, we had 50, so let's try 30 on this and then we're gonna change the cone angle because we want Dennis to be illuminated we're gonna change the angle slightly and have a close look and you will see that we have some very faint shadows going on in the back there that's basically what you want you can uh, increase the intensity slightly if you like um, we are going to change once again the um, the penumbra to soften that and maybe tweak that drop off again. Not too much. All right, so that is one light. We're gonna take this guy, go to display and show all. That is two lights. And then we'll take, uh, actually we'll just go to show display all, all right? So now all our lights are set up, one, two, and three. And like I said, you now need to decide whether you want to have all lights cast shadows or not. Now this light definitely should, that is our key light. This one we're gonna select, we're gonna go in, we're gonna scroll down to shadows, and here you can see that depth map shadows have been turned off, but uh, ray trace shadows have been turned on, okay? So we're gonna go to uh, view, we're gonna go to bookmark and go to Dennis, and let's turn this off and see if we see a huge effect, minimal, okay? That doesn't mean that you won't see a difference in your render though, okay? So keep that in mind. So I'm gonna turn that off for now and I'm gonna select my hair light as well, right there, and turn that off as well, okay? 
So that is basically our setup. Now what we can do if you like is select our backdrop, right click, get a sign new material, and instead of a Lambert, we'll do a blimp to get a little bit of reflection. And then we'll go with a fairly dark color. So we'll start with dark gray, something like so. And we're gonna go to view and uh, bookmark and Dennis. And I will just do a render so you can see what the final result will look like, okay? So uh, hang on, here we go. All right, guys, there you have it. This is uh, Dennis. You can see that we have uh, a pretty decent light situation going on. You can see the shadow cast uh, by our uh, key light. No shadows by our uh, fill light or uh, back or hair light, so that's okay. And you can see some nice contrasting shadows underneath his, uh, his coat here on his arm, uh, you know, on his shoulder and so forth. So that uh, creates a little bit of depth to our scene and that's basically what we want, okay? So uh, that's all there's to it. If you have any questions, as always, uh, just uh, let me know. And uh, that said, uh, please hit that like button, uh, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos and see you guys next time, bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.